Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1056. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, 1056 to 1058, click on the link below the video. Hey, you are not going to believe this video. We're going to see how to use slicers and formulas together. Now, here's the deal. We have a data set, field names at the top, records and rows. This is racing data. These times are how fast the racer went around the track. But we want to be able to filter this column by racer and track and get the minimum value. That means we're making a calculation, a min calculation based on two conditions. Now, we can use filter and easily filter using drop downs based on two conditions. But how do we get our formulas to respect that filter? On this sheet, we'll see three examples. And then over on this 1056 2, we'll see an amazing fourth example of a formula that will respect a slicer filter data set. All right, the first thing is this is a 2013 trick. We're going to add a slicer to this table and use the slicer instead of the filter. All right, let's convert this to a table. Field names at the top, records in rows. I use Control T to convert it to an official Excel table. Click OK. Immediately, I come up to Table Tools, Design, and Name this table. I called it Racer Table. Enter. We could use the filter, right? But I don't want to have to use the filter. It's hidden down here. You have to come down here and unfilter. I want something much more beautiful and obvious. Insert Slicer. I get to choose. I'm going to say I want a slicer for racer and track. Click OK. Now they come like this, but we can certainly resize them, add some color and some format. All right, so we have uh, resize them and a little bit of formatting. Now I can simply select Isaac and CTAC. Instantly, everything's filtered. We can see these hidden rows over here. But now we want to make calculations based on these slicer filters. Now we're going to see three examples here. The first way is we can add a total row. Right click, table, total row, escape. Or you can come up to design and check total row. Notice bloop, there's a total row. Or here's a great trick. I'm going to come right. Actually, I'm going to move this down a little bit. Ready? Click, point to the edge, click and drag. I normally wouldn't put this here because as we add new records, then it will interfere. But I have for the video, I just wanted it close to where the total row is and these other formulas will be. Hey, check this out. We can come to the bottom and exactly below the data set, I use the keyboard Alt equals. Now, Alt equals usually puts the auto sum, but if I hit F2, no way, it put the subtotal function. Now, we can use the drop down and select a different function because I'm interested in fastest time based on those two conditions we selected and instantly. 46.5. So if I select Ezariah at CTAC, the two conditions or criteria are from our slicers. Instantly, our total row says the fastest time is 40. Now, if you don't want a total row, you can absolutely come over to somewhere else in the spreadsheet and use the subtotal. Subtotal, we select our function 5 for min or 105 if we want the subtotal to not only respect the filter, but also manually hidden rows. I'm going to select that one, comma, and then the reference I simply highlight. And look at that, I forgot to build this formula when it wasn't filtered. So now I'm going to have to type out racer table. I see from my drop down that icon there means it's a table, an official Excel table. I type a square bracket to get to my field names. I want times in second, close square bracket, close parentheses. All right, so now when we use our slicers, these two formulas absolutely respect the criteria we're selecting from the slicer. Now, if you're in 2010 or later, we can use the awesome aggregate. Aggregate has a few other functions over and above what subtotal does. And aggregate does basically the exact same thing as subtotal, but it does a few other things also. Look at this. It has median and mode in addition to the standard 11 functions that subtotal has. It also has 14 to 19, which are array 
capable functions. We're not going to use any of those here. We're simply going to use min for 5, comma, a bunch of cool arguments for options. We're going to say ignore hidden rows, comma, and we're not using this top one. We're not using array or k. We're using the bottom one, which is reference. Notice that's the same argument name as in subtotal. All right, so now I'm going to highlight. And because it had the uh, top cell there, it went and put the full table formula and nomenclature in for us. All right, so there's another example of a function or a formula that will respect any slicer criteria. I can even unfilter it all, and boom, instantly we have it. Zane at SeaTac, the fastest time is 37.2. So we saw total row, subtotal, and aggregate. They all respect slicers. Now let's go look at it. A fourth example with a totally different formula over on 1056-2. Now, in Excel Magic Trick 1010, I showed you this awesome trick. We need to multiply two columns to get the total revenue. So we use some product, which takes column one, column two, multiplies the respective elements, and then adds to get a total. But if I have a filter or a slicer, if I select product one, I want my formula to totally respect that slicer filter criteria. And this does not do that. All right, what I really want here, this was product one. That's what I want. I want it on my formula somehow to get just those cells. Control Z. If I were to select product two, I want my formula to do something like that. So in essence, I want my formula to see only the filtered values. Now our formula here is going to involve three functions, sum, product, subtotal, and offset. Now I'm going to start with offset, because one of the things we're going to need for some product is I'm going to need two arrays to multiply and then add. But the two arrays have to be the same size. So I'm going to start by seeing if I can create this range here as a filtered range. And then we'll put it inside of some product to multiply. And we're going to start with the offset function. Now, the offset creates a reference. You give it a starting point, like the first cell in the range. If I were to grab a single cell, I could say something like rows from the starting point. Do I want to go up or down? I'm going to add three rows. And then for columns from that starting position in the rows down, do I subtract or add columns? I'm going to add. Now, this offset formula would then just give me 2820. This is just to show you how offset works. Right? So we have a starting position, and then how far up or down you want to go, rows, and then how far left or right you want to go, go columns. But watch this. I want this whole range. So in the rows argument, I'm going to give it an array of values. And watch this. I'm going to say, hey, go 0 away, then 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, then 6. And since I don't want to move from this column here, subtract columns or add columns, I'm going to leave that argument empty or put a 0. I'm going to leave it empty. Now watch this. This is called a function argument array operation. This rows argument is expecting a single value. I'm giving it an array of values. That means offset will spit out however many values I put in, which in this case are 7. So guess what? When I highlight this and hit F9, boom, offset spits out 7 values. Now that kind of seems silly there. Offset gave us an array of the exact values. But guess what? That offset construction, when we put it in subtotal, when we filter, it'll give me just the numbers that meet the condition. And the rest of the values will be 0. Control Z. Let's put it into subtotal. Subtotal, I'm going to have to use some function. I'm going to use 9. Now, it's never going to actually add, because offset is only going to give it one value for each one of the ranges. So the 9 is just there because we need to put a function there. But watch this. Right now, if I hit F9, it's going to give me the same thing as offset, Control Z. Let's hit Enter and filter it and see if it respects that slicer criteria. Now when I hit F9, you've got to be kidding me. 446, 241, and 
2, 23, the rest of the values are 0. And what's so cool about this is that array, because there's zeros here, we can just multiply it inside of sum product times the second full array, and boom, we have our answer, Control-Z. Now, we definitely don't want to hard code this array in there. I just did that so we could see uh, as we're learning how this works, because we don't know how many rows there are going to be, and this would be hard coding. So we're going to create that array from 0 to whatever the last record is, minus 1, with row, product, table, square, bracket, units, close square bracket, close parentheses on the row, minus row, and the very first cell is B2. All right, and so now inside this rows, row will give us 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or whatever it is. And when we subtract the row of 2, it'll give me 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So when I click on the argument and hit F9, we can see there is our array of how far to go down for the rows argument, Control Z. And now if we highlight this whole thing and hit F9, you can see, so sure enough, that will work, Control Z. Now we're going to put that into some product the first array. And let me hit F9 and show you some. Notice that those are semicolons. Um, earlier, we had commas. They actually have to be semicolons because the sum product needs the same dimensions for their arrays. Semicolons mean go down a row. So this is really one column array times seven rows. And that's what this other column is also. So the fact that we used the row function minus row gave us those semicolons. We could type them in, but some product has to have the same size dimension arrays for all of the arrays entered in Control Z. All right, so now I come to the end. That's array 1, comma, array 2. C2 to C7. Nope, I'm going to have to do that same. Type out the product table. And then square brackets. And this one's going to be cell price tab, close square bracket, close parentheses. And there we go. Now when I filter, boom, it totally respects that slicer filter multiplying two columns. So when I expand it all, it gives me the right one. When I filter it with my slicer, that is totally amazing. So in this video, we saw four examples of formulas that respect slicer criteria. All right, we'll see you next video.